So guys, with everything going on in the past few weeks, we have been fully focused on products rolling off of the line, the next generation vehicle, Cybercab, Optimist, and more importantly, the Model Y, which is expected to be delivered as early as this week. But the one thing here that we should be giving more attention to, and we have been neglecting it quite often, is the fact that the next generation end game hardware is about to roll out and that is going to be the one that drives unsupervised full self-driving. We are looking at the timeline and the expected delivery date of when this chip will arrive. With full self-driving version 13.2.8 gradually rolling out to hardware for vehicles, Tesla continues its streak of incremental improvements following the major software release just late last year. Full self-driving version 13 stack introduced several notable features including start button from park, reverse function, and park at destination. It also enables full resolution video input from AI4 cameras at 36Hz and leverages the new Cortex supercomputer for faster, more precise decision making. Being that version 13 marks a huge leap in advancement compared to version 12, the next major release is expected to be even larger and more powerful than what we have today. In discussion with Ashok, Tesla's VP of AI, he states that full self-driving version 14 will be the next big leap in performance, bringing much larger model and context. FSD V14 will be the first version to utilize audio inputs primarily for detecting emergency vehicles. However, this capability could extend to other sounds that influence human driving decision, such as car crashes, loud noises, and honking. And at the minimum, FSD could become more cautious when detecting sounds associated with accidents or warning signals from other vehicles. Coincidentally, most of these improvements, along with the larger model and contact size, has been listed in the upcoming improvement section of V13 release notes. It indicates that there will be a 3x model size increase as well as another 3x for the model cortex length scaling. Now, coincidentally enough, Ashok pointed out that hardware 4, or AI 4 in this case, is memory constrained and limited by the RAM that is built on board. This is essentially the vehicle's ability to remember past events, things that happened 13 seconds or one minute ago is no longer going to be in the memory. But a good example here would be when FSD drives your vehicle through a large parade that lasts about a few miles long it would want to remember what had happened in the past to expect what is going to happen in the future. To know that the parade is going to continue is a really important aspect of what we as humans want to know when we are driving in the same scenario. Now, since context is stored in memory, its capacity is naturally limited and restricted. However, Ashok specifically mentioned that Tesla's current limitation stems from the available memory in hardware for computers making this the key bottleneck in the system's overall performance. When asked by a user on X whether AI4 will be enough or require an upgrade to the future AI5 computer, not a Tesla app summarized and gave a very concise response to the situation. They say that although it is not necessarily, but it always could be, Ashok said that context size is limited by AI4's memory so they can't make the context size too large. Those details we don't know, but hopefully a larger context size wouldn't add a huge benefit. Obviously, hardware 5 would have more memory, so we'll see how much Tesla added and how much context size there is to compare with hardware 4. So the real question here is, is hardware 4 enough to truly run unsupervised full self-driving and give us the confidence that our cars can run on the RoboTaxi network? Honestly, that is pretty hard to say because although Tesla has worked many magics and proven us wrong on multiple occasions, there is going to come to a point where they do reach the full limitations and the bottleneck of the system and this is where they will have to adjust and upgrade. At this point, there is no doubt that the hardware 4 camera is more than enough and that now they are preparing to retrofit the front bumper camera into older vehicles with the new board that is going off of the line. And that is why the camera suite is more than sufficient to run unsupervised self-driving. The only thing left is going to be the ceiling of the full self-driving board and Tesla is going to do one of either thing. They are going to continue to keep the context size constraint or they are going to have to provide a retrofit 
or a new board that is going to come with improved memory. Now, in other news, as part of the latest software update 2025.2.6, Tesla has activated an in-cabin radar system that has remained unused for over three years. Since late 2021, Tesla has quietly installed radar units in the front headliner just above the rear view mirror of the Model Y. This hardware is present in the new Model 3 Highland as well as the Cybertruck. This update now enables this radar to improve first row passenger detection. According to Tesla's release note, the first row cabin sensing system has been updated to use the cabin radar now standard in all 2025 Model Ys. Your Model Y was pre-built with the necessary hardware allowing Tesla to bring this technology to your vehicle. Tesla states that the cabin radar enhances occupant detection and supports safety features like dynamic airbag deployment which is just based on the passenger size and position. This represents an improvement over previous years that relied solely on the seat sensors. The Model Y's owner's manual confirms that this feature applies to vehicles produced from late 2021 and onwards. The Model 3 Highland, the Cybertruck, are also expected to receive this functionality through a software update later down the line. Just recently, Wes, a Cybertruck engineer, noted that the radar can detect a child if left inside the vehicle even when the selfie camera cannot, and while rare, the incidents can be severe, reinforcing Tesla's focus on passenger safety. Added to this, Tesla appears to be offering free radar retrofits to some vehicles missing the hardware due to past supply shortages. However, it remains unclear if the retrofit will be extended to pre-2021 models, which was the first year it was introduced. Now moving on, it looks like we finally have confirmation on Grok AI appearing on Tesla vehicles. In early January, during a live stream, Elon confirmed that Grok will be coming to Tesla vehicles down the line. More recently, he stated that Grok's launch is coming soon, saying that you'll be able to talk to your Tesla and ask it for anything. Just this Monday, Elon live demoed Grok 3 to the public, calling it the smartest AI on earth. And the best part is, Grok will be available to all Tesla vehicles, as all processing will be handled in the cloud rather than the vehicle itself. So there you guys have it, lots of things to digest over the coming months. Whether it will be waiting for the next generation cheaper models or the non-launch series Model Y to roll off the line, one thing we do know for sure is that all of this is going to be combined together with the future of full self-driving in mind. Now what this also means is that if you are in the scene for having the latest software as well as the latest hardware, you are probably going to be wanting the Hardware 5 computer that they have been working on over the past few years and Elon hinted it a few months back saying that in 18 months we will be getting that upgraded computer within all new vehicles. This is going to be the end game chip. This is going to come with a lot of enhancements that current vehicles do not have. The interesting thing here is the Cybercab, which is expected to roll out sometime this June, is probably going to be running some form of an upgraded AI4 slash AI5 computer, and that is going to give us an idea whether it's worth it to wait or whether it's worth it to pick one up right now. If you want to know more about AI5 and what the positives and what the benefits of waiting are and what is coming to this chip, Go check out my previous video, there is a ton of things to dissect over there. I'll drop that in the comments below as well as up top there before you guys head out. In either case, however, I will be keeping a close eye on all hardware related things as well as everything else that comes up. You guys want to make sure to stick around, hit that subscribe and that bell notification if you guys haven't done so already. I know a ton of you guys are watching but haven't decided to click that button yet for whatever reason, smash that today. Anyways. Follow me on Twitter as well at HeyJohnny. Over there you will see things that you wouldn't see over here. This should be it for this video. However, I hope you guys enjoyed it. This is John. Once again, peace out.